So welcome everybody. We are live with Art Tech and Innovation. My name is Asia Scudder. Uh, we are officially at the studio of Mitchell O'Hearn in Lynn, Mass. We're going to be visiting with with Mitch. We were just, he and I were just talking about how it is that there are so many places to start and his studio and his history uh not to mention his knowledge base and current projects so we're going to um swing around i'm going to let mitch actually join in the conversation but first we're going to let his studio do some visual speak for us and uh this truly is a place you could spend hours <laughs> reading catching glimpses of poetry, past projects, um, haiku project, which is one of Mitch's ongoing things. And uh, we'll talk to him about also his work with Fort Point Theater Channel, his live radio broadcast that comes on weekly. And, um, We'll also get to have um, the visual experience of seeing him do some actual printing, um, which it appears that he's laid out some work for us to uh, get a glimpse of that. So we're excited, and uh, here we are, our Master of Ceremonies, yes, Mitchell Ahern. Hi. Hi, Mitch. Hey Asia, how's it going? It's great. It's cloudy and cold and uh, a little daft outside. Winter in New England. Yes, but here it's bright and cheerful and plenty, right. plenty of entertainment in here. My God. It's not exactly warm, warmer than outside. <laughs> it's not too bad. I, at least I'm not seeing my breath, so that's, yeah. a, that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, so you're you're not often on the camera. So often you're behind the press, doing things, um, creating art, and uh, letting your art do a lot of the speaking for you. So there are things that we want to ask you. And art, art and edge and prop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I have some just really basic curiosity questions for you, and one of one of those questions is, how long have you been invested as, well, I'll say a visual artist specifically, like just factual questions. You know, I started, uh, I mean, I've always, you know, I've, I've been a, a musician of some sort or another since, you know, the third grade, where I played a musical instrument. Is that the same thing? I don't know. I think so. Uh, but I didn't really... Uh, start connecting with the visual arts until I was in college when I started making uh, t-shirts for bands of mine and friends and events and stuff out of linoleum and then uh, a friend gave me a printing press a, a very simple sleigh press that uh, came out of his father's shop which was closing down so I started using that and, and printed t-shirts and scrolls and you know, all that stuff up there is all some of the we'll the, take a look here the, uh, the stuff on fabric uh so i printed really on fabric almost oh. exclusively for 20 or 30 years um and you know combine that uh, started combining that with uh the musical stuff that i do the invented instruments um and and then kind of theatrical work so they all kind of started to roll up together um and then more recently, I've started doing more traditional letterpress work as well. Uh, you know, just like the ink on paper, uh, which I'm still combining with the performance art, um, but also, uh, you know, doing posters and broadsides and books and uh, that sort of thing as well. It definitely, we saw that with Dahlgren Sunrise. Yes. Where you were really doing a lovely rendition of that novel. Well, Dog or Sunrise, nice. it really started with the letterpress. I, I had a, uh, a there's a particular passage that I uh, printed out in a, you know, just like a one paragraph that I, I printed out on different sheets of uh, 
uh, of paper, actually mostly handmade paper um, that a friend of mine had made. And, and then I started performing that, you know, I'd, I'd be giving a class or something and I'd show them things and then I'd just kind of read the, the different sheets. And, and then that just kept expanding and expanding and expanding until it became, you know, a, a sort of main production of Fort Point Theater Channel with funding from Boston Foundation and, you know, a cast and crew of 30 people and interactive video and dancers and five or six musicians and, you know, the whole the whole thing and you know and and there's there there was a letterpress component that stayed stayed with that the whole time too that was incredible i mean it was really a sight and sound experience and the fort point theater channel just for the people that don't know is located in uh boston yep at boston proper or... well it's it's it is sort of nominally focused on uh the fort point area of boston um mm -hmm. A number of members live at, in uh, live and work in Fifteen Channel Center, but it's really become more regional. So you know we have people up in Amesbury and you know scattered around the the suburbs of Boston and Lynn and Lowell, and uh, so it's it's really sort of a north uh, or you know eastern mass, if you will, Greater Boston uh, theatrical group that's focused not really on just so much traditional stuff, but new configurations. You know so. Uh, you know, combining dance and experimental music and interactive video and, you know, different, different unusual performance sites and, uh, you know, and a certain amount of political work as well. So, uh, you know, which definitely suits the kind of work that I do. So I'm, uh, I've been a member there for uh, I don't know, a few years, four or five years, I guess. One of the other places that I saw you that was so inspiring was, um, uh, was it the Atlantic Works? Uh, Atlantic Works Gallery on uh, Border Street in uh, East Boston, where I was also a member for five or six years. I'm I'm no longer a member there. So you know, it's a cooperative gallery, collaborative gallery. Um, no longer a member there, but uh, actually, I think I have a piece there that's that's right. You know, a piece there right now uh, as a part of the un the UFO project, unfinished objects. Is that what it is, the UFO? So everyone's presenting a, you know stuff that's only half done, and and, and I presented. <laughs> Uh, That's a hilarious. Feature length film that I made four or five years ago with Atlantic Works Gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, we recreated the entirety of uh, Ed Wood's Plan 9 from Outer Space. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. And, we, you know, with just with gallery members, we kept the whole script, but, you know, reshot the whole thing. And it, it is actually kind of done. You, you can go look at it up online, but it, it was never kind of launched in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and plus, it's all about UFOs. So it's, it kind of sneaks in the back door of that exhibit. That, that's that up there. That All right. Let's that's, take a look here. That's a saucers, saucers seen over Hollywood. Flying saucers seen over Washington, D.C. Uh, that's a prop from the film. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's, 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 this is one of the flying saucers over here. Oh my God! Well, we're also going to look at your uh, your rollers while we scoop over to the flying saucer. Oh, my, my Brayer collection. Uh, yeah, the, next to that lamp, you see there's a kind of a double CD. Oh, there. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get to. Uh... Lee, yeah, Lee made those. <laughs> and actually, straight over your head are some props from Dahlgren Sunrise. Oh yeah, I do um, remember that. That was the moon. Yep, the moon dance. The moon dance. Um, oh my God, it's amazing. You also did something that uh, I didn't get to see, but it was the Oracle. Oh, the Oracle we, Control, yeah. We had a huge press that you brought down. It was sort of busker style or something. Yeah, well, the, I've, I've, the Oracle of Control, it, it was actually originally built for um, a, a solo show that I had at Atlantic Works called Welcome to Control. And the, uh, the, the, the theme of Welcome to Control was it was the gift shop to a, uh, an extremely secret organization known as Control that, uh, you know, gets referenced in, uh, uh, you know, William S. Burroughs and um, Jean Le Carré and, uh, you know, Get Smart, you know, it's this semi-fictional agency. But in fact, it really does exist. And, and we were lucky enough to have the gift shop there. And uh, one, one chunk of that, that shop was the Oracle of Control, which is three fabric scrolls. You can, you can, you can kind of see them up there. Uh, on a each each of them about twenty feet long, maybe fifteen feet long, um, <laughs> it, it's of slightly different lengths, and a and a cranking system such that you rotated the the uh, 
the uh, scrolls and they had a little text, they had cut up text, you know, William S. Burroughs, uh, Brian Geisen style text. In fact, one of the pieces of text was from William S. Burroughs. Um, so when you you'd crank it through and then when you stop, you those three phrases would realign and you could oh. give people's I don't know, their fortunes. You could tell the Oracle, uh, the Oracle would tell them things. <laughs> um, so we did that in the for the gift shop. I've I've done that at the uh, Figment Festival. We did that at um, uh, uh, the uh, 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 blacksmithing and, uh, and art show up in uh, Fitchburg. Um, but it's quite a big. It's a, it's it's a very very big thing. Uh, like just physically, you know, it's like twenty feet long. And yeah, it's huge. Feet high, and, right? And it's, it requires a lot of, you know. Uh, a lot of stuff to put it together. So I want to ask you quickly then too about the Martha Stewart uh, work that you've done, and then let's talk about some of the traditional presses that you've worked on too. Well, Martha uh, Stewart living on the media, yeah, there's, that's a prompt from that show. Um, when when Martha Stewart, uh, during the period of time when she was having all her legal difficulty, uh, I. Uh, it all actually started off that I I made a T-shirt that said "Free Martha," <laughs> and uh, and and during just kind of an unrelated performance, I happened to be wearing that shirt, and the audience got, you know, was kind of actually incensed. They're like, "Oh, Martha's a terrible person." I'm like, "No, no, Martha's, you know, Mar you know, Martha's <laughs> an, a complicated person, sure, but you know, she's really right there at the the move the head of the movement of getting you know getting people to do their own stuff, you know, in a very real way." Uh, and so uh, I, I sort of went back from that and wrote a project called uh, Martha Stewart in the Underworld, which is a solo show in which I'm reading from, you know, her books and incorporation papers and plea agreements and uh, sentencing statements and, you know, press, uh, you know, looking at sort of three aspects of Martha Stewart that uh, are you know, uh, you know relate to you know the nature of divinity. So, the the hearth, the goddess of the hearth, um, you know uh, the the goddess of creative destruction. You know your sort of Shiva archetype and your um, the the uh, you know the the, the divine uh, of the the rebirth. You know the. The Christian mythology, or the Persephone and the pomegranate seeds. So we're we're drawing these connections, showing how she's exploiting these ancient archetypes in her, you know, in, in her uh, uh, sort of business and professional, uh, you know, <laughs> approach to life. Um, so I, I I really only performed that during a period of time when she was incarcerated. I think I think I've maybe only performed it once since then. Um, and I did once. I'm, you know, in my, my my day job, such as it is, is uh, I'm a digital marketer. And I did once. We did. We paid a call on Martha Stewart living on the media in New York City, um, to, uh, uh, you know, to pitch the organization on what on what we had to sell. And uh, I had my free Martha shirt under my <laughs> under my business suit. <laughs> Uh, and I, I kept telling myself uh, if I saw her in the hallway, I was going to rent uh, my shirt open and and uh, and almost certainly get fired. Um, uh, but it, it didn't come to pass. So, so you didn't have that opportunity I, at all. It, 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 I, I, I missed an opportunity there. Well, that was funny. Well, I know when I had the Blue Wave Gallery, we had your dish towels up on the wall. Uh, yeah. And uh, several people liked, especially some of the FU dish towels uh, right, right. Uh, on Martha. Stuart Lennon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, she and, and, and I will say this: the the Martha Stewart dish towel, of which I printed hundreds. Uh, and you know, I had a big show at the Decorator where I had you know like fifty of those dish towels up that main staircase. Um, they were the best quality dish towels. I've never my my, my dish towel practice has never completely recovered <laughs> from you know the collapse of the uh, the um, that deal she had with Kmart, you know, where she had all that stuff in there. Oh yeah, her Target. Her, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, she, yeah, she, I mean, her stuff is still available, but the dish towels disappeared, and the oh. they they never came back when she uh, left Kmart. Uh, <laughs> I the see. Kmart collection. The Kmart collection. Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, thank you. That's good. It's helpful to hear what you've been up to, and you know, this sort of a decades long history of, of your work with the with the 
art, so I know we're just hitting some high points. Right, just just the weird but, stuff. Uh huh. <laughs> just the weird, weird stuff. I know, but people like it. It gets us outside of our conventionality, helps us think the things that we've been thinking but didn't want to say, and uh, sometimes don't know what container to put them in. So you give right. us another container. Thank goodness. Um, you know, I'll do a lot of what I do is political, um, particularly recently in the current climate, um, but not always. Yeah. So wait, so I'm seeing like two presses here. The last time I visited, I believe you just had one, one press. Uh, so, you, well, here's what I have, and I'm sorry, everything's kind of such a terrible mess. Um, this, by the way, is a, is a gallon or a, like a five gallon can of black ink. Oh, wow. Um, from, so, where's it from? Uh, oh, this is uh, from a place that we're helping to clear out that, that shut down many years ago. So this is, this is my Golden Curl Model 3, um, 7 by 11 Chase, uh, made in Boston in about 1875 um or thereabouts and this is this is a, a sort of larger some version of the same style press by golding uh this is a golding uh pearl number 14 uh also a platen press this this is my this is the press i i, I i'm really using most right now oh. um for this kind of production work, you know, so these, these are, for instance, some you know, just postcard backs that I've been working on. The fronts have to be done. Um, hmm. Plus, I also have this uh, beautiful piece of machinery. Oh, I, I, they're so good. This, this I got actually for free. It had been um, deserted in the basement of a building in Hull that was being sold. Um, and it was in pretty poor shape. But, uh, you know, one of the things that I do these days also, in addition to the performance stuff, is I, you know, I uh, buy and sell and restore presses. And, you know, I volunteer at the Museum of Printing in Haverhill, where, uh, you know, I also am on the sort of the press picking up and restoration team. And um, so I, you know, I really, you know, I, I really love this style of printing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it sort of takes us back to our roots and just, you know, it has real presence, you know, that the modern, you know, digital printing certainly doesn't have. Um, so I, I like to sort of be helping to preserve all this equipment. Actually, over here, you'll see uh, this is a, a oh. Golden Pearl 11, um, which is uh, not actually next on my restoration list. That one is this one that you can hardly see under all the junk. Uh, that's a Golden Pearl uh, number eight. Uh, which is actually quite rare. There's only about 250 of those made, um, which I, it, it, despite the fact that it's in many small pieces is, is pretty close to being done. I'm almost to the point where I could just put it all back together again. Hmm. Um, it's a small press. It's only five by eight inch chase, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a very cute. And, uh, and then that, see, that name see, Golden Pearl. See, sir. There's... See, there's, there's that sort of the press back there. Oh, yeah, I see. Um, yeah, the Golding, uh, Goldings were actually made right in downtown Boston, uh, mm. right right where the financial district is today. Um, and then they moved out to Franklin, you know, some at some point in their late history. But most of their career was spent right here in Boston. Amazing. So these are all around the same time period then. That, yeah, uh, well, between, you know, the, 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 the heyday of these styles of presses was sort of the, you know, 1870s to the 1960s, you know. Uh, and then, yeah, that's my uh, my show card press, by the, which is sort of the style of press, but also the, the maker. Um, although I think this was actually ma manufactured by Vanderhoek. Uh, and this is, this is also, I mean, th that's the other press that I'm... I use a lot, which I'm using today. Actually, I can show you how that. Could works. you show us? Yeah, yeah I'm I'm so interested in that. To have this inked up. So this is this is a poster I'm doing for a theatrical production put on by Fort Point Theater Channel, mm -hmm. um, or kind of an association with Fort Point Theater Channel from the Owl Group. Uh, it's all about slavery. The show's coming up, so 
as you can see, I've done a couple of slavery related posters. So I oh yeah, we'll look at those in a minute. So I volunteer to do a little, just a more of a keepsake sort of thing. So you've already inked up the uh, yeah. This is already inked and laid locked up. Production. Oh wow! Look yeah. at that. Yeah, that. Big smudge under the A there. Yeah. So, how much finesse do you do you call that a cast off, or do you yeah, do you call that, or you sign it and say, "Now that's a rare print because well, you know, it it's, has it's a, a, one tries to be tidy." Um, but, you know, it, it, we may, we may, um, we may let it go. Um, so, yeah, so this, this press lets, you know, it's a 20, 24 by 33 inch bed, so I can work really big uh, uh -huh. on that press. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I can do 